Swissborg is the official partner of my channel where you can buy, sell, hold, and more importantly, stake your cryptocurrencies. You can even earn yield on your stable coins. Sign up with my link and you'll earn up to $100 worth of their native token CHSB just for depositing 50 euros worth of crypto. Swissborg. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's not beat around the bush today. Let's not uh, let's not try and go off on any tangents. Let's let's just focus on uh, the reality of the situation, which actually, you know, there's two sides to it, all right? So there's some bullish hopium, but there's also something to be aware of. Um, but given the fact that, you know, a, a, an FTX black swan took place, um, we might be able to read between the lines. So let's just zoom out just very briefly. Uh, this is your absolute peak over here. You can even extend that over a little bit more. There uh, is major resistance over here. And we've got our breakout with a little bit of a move. And then, lo and behold, FTX... We're going to destroy everybody that ever came to our platform. All right, fair enough. And uh, we did, for a brief moment in time, hold on the trend line until we fell down below it. Found ourselves in a symmetrical triangle, crept out of the descending triangle, the giant bear market descending triangle. So we were outside of it once again, and then we broke out of the symmetrical triangle. Fair enough, fair enough. Anything, anything like noteworthy going on on price action? No. Not at all. Nothing at all. In fact, it's basically sideways and, and threatens to come back down to the trend line, I would say, which basically means uh, revisiting the previous low at this rate. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. However, we have to recognize that there is, a, uh, there is basically a double breakout taking place here, although it being extremely weak. Um, when it came to traditional markets, you know, I speak about those quite frequently. Uh, the euro looks like it wants to continue on more. The Dixie wants to go back down again. That's generally how it looks, although there's not much between it. But that's generally how it looks. And that should favor further upside for anything, really. It should do. But everyone's just afraid of Bitcoin and crypto because of, well, I mean, there's reasons to be scared. Who knows what's coming next? But either way, it looks reasonable uh, for what it's worth. And so if we do scrape down to these lows once again, it might be a double bottom kind of vibe. Right? That could be the case. If the bear market is effectively over for traditional markets, which I've made a case for that also, most of the major indices printing double bottoms and things like this, and the Dixie looking like it's actually found a peak, uh, although it can wiggle around for, for several years uh, in, in what might appear to be a, like a sideways and down fashion. That's going to add volatility to uh, all stocks, commodities, and crypto anyway. But um, yeah, long story short, you know, there is a double breakout that we've seen here, but the uh, follow through has been pretty lame, definitely pretty lame. Now, the one thing I was going to say on, on the case of the bears is the um, is the short signal. So we've got the red portion of the cloud across below the cloud. This is more than a short signal. This is actually a trend continuation signal and the Chiku span closed below the price. So that's, you know, we should expect further downside based on this indicator. Uh, that's generally what it means. And a trend signal based on a daily, you know, where was the last one that we had similar to this? Well, the last one we had that was actually formed in the same way was this one. And uh, this was formed on this low, the absolute low of this area. So it can be a bit of a red herring. And again, yeah, these, uh, some of these moves, especially this one, uh, but I believe also this one, were were born outside of um, this chat. So they were contrived moves. This was an FTX move. I think that was a... Uh, I'm pretty sure that this was a, um, uh, a CPI read uh, problem. Um, so, yeah, even though we got the signals at the lows, expecting further downside cancelled out now we you know if you're looking at this indicator and focusing specifically just on this the only way it'll get cancelled out is if the uh, chiku span touches price which is all the way up here at twenty thousand, or this blue comes up and crosses this red which is at eighteen thousand five hundred. so we could look at certain areas on this chart going well i'll tell you what if we do break above there and uh, these wouldn't be long signals but at least super major massive trend down signals will be cancelled out and it would require daily closures basically of that let me just check the sound okay it's all working so there's two ways to look at this which basically gives us a um a, an edge of almost nothing <laughs> you know so we've got bearish signals and uh, we've got bullish signals we've got all of that combined into one basically gray area which is why sitting on the sidelines is still probably the better scenario to be doing now we looked at all the other reasons on the higher term time frames to suggest that we might have even found a bottom these are videos that i've done over the last week and that's all still 
the case. You know, higher term time frames, uh, you can try and translate shorter term time frames to higher term time frames, and you'll get contradictions all over the place. But what we can say is we've got a double breakout taking place here with no follow through as yet. We have a short continuation of a trend signal pointing down, which offers further downside. And we've got traditional markets that have maybe found their peak as far as the everything bounce 2.0. That's why I sold it. But there is also a very strong possibility that we found the lows on traditional markets uh, printing those double bottoms. So suggesting that, all right, a period of accumulation might be the, uh, the most likely scenario. Choppy, uh, testy, sideways, accumulation before we move back up uh, and go into what would appear to be a, a, a long bull market in the form of traditional markets, which is obviously slow and, and steady. So you know, there, there's reasons to be optimistic, despite this short signal, despite the overall trend. The majority of the trend, as far as the, um, the trend line is concerned, appears to have come to an end. And it was respected on the way down, let's face it, it was respected. So it's not a nothing trend line. Being above this is decent, and we can follow this all the way down as an area of support. Each one of these times that we come and test it could be, could be an area of interest. But there's no major confirmation for Super Bull Run or anything like that. Not at all. The only thing we've got going for us was the weekly and uh, and still is the weekly. So we've got the weekly huge capitulation red. Uh, we've got the bullish divergence on the Monofo Index. The bullish divergence RSI. Um, accumulation style MACD with the uh, histogram ticks. So everything seems very similar to the way that the last bear market ended which is exactly the same way apart from we didn't even have bullish divergence on the rsi so this you know this time round it's actually a better setup than this time round but even so when we did finally put in that low we still accumulated for what three months so you you, you know you're not going to be you're not going to be foolish um if you sit and wait there's nothing wrong with that. There's always going to be people on Twitter and Telegrams or whatever going, oh, you didn't buy the absolute low. I did. Trust me, bro. Well, where's your evidence? I just did, okay? I bought it. I, I bought the absolute low because I just did because I'm awesome and I'm telling you that I did it. Uh, all right, okay. A any uh, any evidence? No need for evidence. Just take my word for it, bro. All right, okay. So, all right, okay. Stop with the peer pressure then, all right? Stop with the peer pressure. So, um... So that is basically the deal. It's still sideways. It's, it's still sidelines. And uh, I'm happy to sit back and, and wait, especially because yesterday's video was about how altcoins could seriously get damaged in the further downside. Even if uh, Bitcoin moves up, they're unlikely to outperform Bitcoin for the most part uh, on this position on the Bitcoin dominance. That was yesterday's video anyway. Then my main... Uh, intention at this uh, end of this bear market moving into the next bull market is to focus specifically on altcoins of interest that, that, um, that I'm very keen on older boring ones that no one really cares about and um, because you know they've been around for ages you, you boomer all right <laughs> a four-year-old coin is now unfashionable it's too old what the heck is going on in this world I need these charts to be old because they respect moving averages they've got a decent projections I'm not looking for billions of X's 10x will do me, 1,000%, that's fine. I, I, anyone who complains with 1,000% is ridiculous. Right, so um, so yeah, that's basically it. Today is Sunday, as we all know. Rubbish day for trading. Well, probably the worst, arguably, definitely is the worst. Um, you know, anything is possible, but for the most part, you know, sideways and down is probably more likely because Sunday is just such a, a rubbish trading day. Uh, bring on Monday, not only because it's a new trading day for traditional markets, we get to see which way the Dixie and other FX pairs move, but it's also England's first game of the World Cup versus Iran. Hopefully, hopefully we win this one. Uh, they've not been doing too well, to be fair, when we were qualifying, to be honest. So, you know, the glory of the uh, previous Euro Cup is, is you know... It just you know it's false false hope but anyway uh tomorrow should be a good day hopefully cross fingers for, for all kinds of things but i would still you know suggest sitting on the sidelines is best because the everything bounce 2.0 has certainly uh reached its major targets or close to and so waiting out to see if it has got legs and continues on is the best thing to do and then and then if that's the case excellent we've got a trend in play we've got a breakout trend in play if not no big deal that was the everything bounce 2.0 finished was a bear market rally after all just as we uh, speculated that it would be and the next thing to do is be to reassess for the next major big swing which probably would be a major low across everything 
Um, especially now that the recession has become more of a buzzword and almost a, a guaranteed certainty across all nations, um, that's normally a, a good time to print a low when recession becomes you know, unescapable and people go, oh my God, what are we going to do? And every, you know, and most people will suffer. Um, you know, trust me, I, I, was, I suffered in the first recession. It was pretty, pretty hard going 2008 for me. Um, and this time I've got the financial capital to take advantage of it. You know, and that is the system that we live in. So I'm not going to, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to complain because I've, I, you know, I've managed to build up a, you know, a, I've, I've managed to put myself in a position where I can take advantage of a recession. But I have to say that, you know, yes, it wasn't that long before the last recession. You know, and the and people who aren't as fortunate as ourselves are, are just going to get slapped in the face once again. Luckily, it's not me this time, but it's going to be a lot of people. So. You know, advantage, uh, you know, take advantage of the recession if you can, which is normally good for asset prices. It sounds counter counterintuitive, but it is the case. It's the normal people, unfortunately, um, who have to pay the price. Right. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.